Ascent Audio, a division of Recorded Books, presents The ABCs of MLM by Randy Gage. Narrated by yours truly, Randy Gage. You know, I would have preferred that James Earl Jones recorded this, or maybe Don Orsillo, the voice of the San Diego Padres. But it seems to be you guys love it when I read my own books. So because you keep asking, I keep recording. Dedication to the dreamers crazy enough to believe that they have the power to alter the trajectory of the universe, even if it's only by a millimeter. Introduction. The Mystery Explained. Frequently, I get asked for the secret of success in our business. How to unravel the mystery of building a massive team with huge volume that creates a legacy income. The so-called mystery is simply a case of the successful people refusing to run away and quit when faced with the same challenges that scare away the non-successful. If we insist on trying to quantify some secret about the process, allow me to distill it down to one fundamental truth. You got into this crazy profession because of hope. Whether you stay in and become successful will come down to belief. People join our biz because they hope they'll qualify for that free bonus car, win the luxury trips, find a rewarding new career, and have those meaty commission checks deposited into their account every week. They hope the business will work. And as long as that hope stays alive, they stay active. If that hope dies, they drop out. This means that every new distributor in your team is a flight risk to quit until one specific dynamic happens. Their hope is transformed into belief. We call this the process of getting somebody over the line. Because once they cross that line from hope to belief, there's a disproportionate chance that they will never quit. Which leads us to this book, why I wrote it, and what it can mean for you. The most important objective is to get you over the line. To share with you the simple but vital actions to take at the beginning of your career to get you into the belief column as quickly as possible. There are not many people on earth who have been able to create the magnitude of success I've produced in leverage sales network marketing. Over the course of my career as a distributor, coach, company executive, and consultant, but principally as a distributor, I've seen the business from every perspective and have been part of teams that have produced literally tens of billions of dollars in revenue. Those results transform my life, taking me from a high school dropout to wealth and prosperity. Ironically, I struggled for the first five years of my career, buying products and tools, attending event after event, losing money every month. Even after I had become a bit profitable, it was still a couple years more before I went from hope to belief. Looking back, I have no idea how I held on to hope for that long. Probably because I was too ignorant to know any better, or maybe because the alternative of giving up on my dream was too depressing to even consider. One thing I do know for sure, people in today's culture will never hang around as long as I did. You probably won't, and most of your team won't as well, which is exactly where this book comes in. By now, you already know that it costs a tenth of the price of other books on network marketing. Why? 
Because I'm not writing this to make money, but offer you the most powerful tool available to get both you and your team over the line in weeks instead of years. We've priced the book so you can buy them by the dozens, leaders can buy them by the hundreds, and companies can buy them by the tens of thousands. My hope is that companies will include them in their distributor kits or leaders will buy them in enough bulk so that every person who joins the team will read this book as part of their new distributor orientation process. I hope you'll read or listen to book one before you contact your first candidate so your belief in what you have to offer is rock solid. And I will tell you something else. This is just for you guys on the audio version. Uh, I'm recording this maybe, I don't know, six weeks after the book has been published in print. And I can tell you, we already have companies and leaders who are doing exactly what I hoped. And they literally are giving this to every new distributor when they join the business. And already they can see the benefit in their retention. Now, here's a note. However, if you tell your sponsor that you're waiting to contact people until after you've finished book one, you've defeated the entire purpose of the book and you're practicing self-sabotage. You can scarf down the Scooby Snacks of book one in like 15 minutes or less. So use that as a catalyst, not as an excuse. Don't use it as a mechanism for procrastination. Believe it or not, it's easier to build this business fast than it is to build it slow. This simple little book will teach you the foundation for growing a successful team, the mindset required, and the fundamental actions that set the DNA of your organization in your first few weeks so you'll have the proper foundation to create the team and business of your dreams. Interesting side note. I'm getting a lot of DMs and emails and stuff, many of them asking me why I titled the book using the term MLM, which I abandoned many years ago, preferring terms such as direct selling, network marketing, or leverage sales, which have a lot less emotional baggage. Here's why I chose this title. Decades ago, my friend, the late, great Mark Yarnell, created a cassette tape. Some of you all are going to have to Google what that is. <laughs> he created a cassette tape to educate new distributors what to expect when they first joined the business. The cassette prepared them for things like dropouts, rejections, and no-shows, but more importantly, explained why the result was worth the challenges you face along the way. The tape was titled The ABCs of MLM, and since this book has a similar goal, I've resurrected the title to pay homage to Mark, one of the true OGs of our profession. This book can have a profound impact on your business, creating a yet bigger impact in your life. Really, please make the most of it. This is Randy Gage. It was written in Miami Beach, Florida in January 2024. Book one, the red pill or the blue? Do you have any idea what you just did? Do you realize what just happened? You innocently whipped out your credit card, placed an activation order, and now you've started a chain reaction of tiny ripple effects that could culminate in a reality-altering outcome. You have officially joined the society of crazy people <laughs> who believe dreams are worth chasing. What's next? Probably the most exciting thrill ride of your career. Really, because you've made a fantastic choice. You've chosen what is arguably the premier option of becoming a social entrepreneur. 
Social entrepreneurs are dedicated to building business in a way that empowers themselves and others serving the greater good. The COVID-19 pandemic and its various after effects caused millions of people to wake up and rethink their lives. They began to question the morality of the standard business model to reevaluate their priorities. Many realized that they could never again leave their future to chance, controlled by either employers or governments. They began to dream again, to crave for work that truly makes a difference. We're now in the era of the social entrepreneur, and I believe this is going to propel a powerful growth era for leverage sales. By joining leverage sales, you benefit from a unique dynamic not found anywhere else. You work for yourself and control your own destiny, but also receive the support of a sponsorship line and company that have a vested interest in your success. As an independent distributor, you get to set the hours you work and choose the people you work with. You will be part of a community and meet people who may become friends for life. You will grow and learn new skills and have the chance to be exposed to and hang around successful people. You don't need prior experience or education. There are many tax benefits and travel opportunities, but there are two more benefits that are profound. Number one, you have unlimited success potential. The only limit to where you end up is the size of your dream and being willing to put in the work. And then number two, you become successful by helping other people reach success. You've joined a profession that is making a positive difference in the world. We launch many innovative breakthrough products that succeed only because of the conversational marketing we provide. We offer ordinary people the opportunity to unleash the wealth-building superpower of leverage, just like the super-rich. Most importantly, we offer people dignity by providing the ability to create an ongoing side income, and sometimes a full-time one, that allows them to escape poverty, provide for their loved ones, and build a better future. We often hear about the huge incomes in our profession and become jaded, but never lose sight of the fact that there are millions of people on earth who have never flown on a plane, don't have enough to eat or safe water to drink, or subsist on substandard wages. Providing them a low-cost way to become an entrepreneur can transform their lives and does. What you do matters. Congratulations. By being part of this movement, you've made a beneficial decision for us all. Welcome to the meritocracy. Another reason you've made such a savvy decision is the fact that leverage sales is the ultimate meritocracy. Leverage sales doesn't care whether you're highly educated or were expelled from high school like me. Leverage sales doesn't care if you're a trust fund baby or down to your last dollar. Leverage sales doesn't care if you have the prestige of royalty or your mom was a junkie. Leverage sales will pay you exactly what you're worth. More specifically, the value you offer to your customers, distributors, and the world. Distributors who mislead prospects, take advantage of their team, or jeopardize their profession are weeded out by the market. Initially, it may seem like these people are successfully achieving their desired goals, but they are building on sand and will soon collapse. Tactics may draw people to you temporarily, but character will keep people with you. You might be able to cheat or game your way to the top of a network marketing company compensation plan, but your stay will be brief. You remain at the top by solving problems, adding value, and operating with integrity. 
Leverage, the superpower of wealth building. One of the most important talking points as you speak about your business should be leverage. The reason I call it a superpower for wealth is because it allows the average person to escape the trading time for money trap that keeps millions broke. Study the world's greatest entrepreneurs and you'll notice they have one thing in common. They understand how to harness the power of leverage. Whether we look at business titans from the past, like Rockefeller, Carnegie, and Ford, or the brilliant entrepreneurs of today, such as Jeff Bezos, Oprah Winfrey, and Richard Branson, they've all built their wealth by employing the concept of leverage. You need to show people the other side gig opportunities don't provide leverage like leverage sales can. If you work for a food delivery app, but you're not delivering orders, you don't earn a penny. Working nights at a coffee shop provides some supplemental income, but no residuals. When you're working for a ride-sharing app, but no calls come in, your bank account isn't growing. In leveraged sales, you can create auto-ship customers that provide you with retail profits month after month. You can recruit and train others to do the same and earn residual override income on the product volume created by their teams. It's the world's greatest opportunity for the average person without a college degree, large investment, or experience the ability to unleash the power of leverage for themselves. So make sure you're getting that story. Know what you've got. A big reason for the increasing acceptance and growth of leverage sales comes from society steadily migrating toward the concept of people running part-time businesses on the side of whatever their job or profession might be. This trend is strongest among millennials and subsequent generations. They love the idea of side gig or side hustle opportunities and have become a driving force in leverage sales. It's vital that you not only understand this side gig economy, but know why leverage sales offers people a dramatically superior option. There are seemingly hundreds of side gigs you can work from home in your bunny slippers or Chewbacca pajamas. Gamer, e-commerce and drop shipping, e-courses and other online education, graphic design, grant writing, recording audiobooks, unboxing and reviewing, etc. Other side hustle opportunities involve putting on your shoes and getting dressed, but still can offer some good income potential. Detailing cars, notarizing documents, flipping furniture, offering pet services, working for food delivery apps, and of course driving for the rideshare companies. Many of these other side gig models have done wonders for the economy, offering economic opportunities to millions of people who didn't have other viable options to transform their financial situations. Celebrate these models. And be prepared to articulate the primary advantages network marketing can offer over them. Talk about leverage and lifestyle. As we just talked about, for most of these side gigs, you're still snared in the trading time for money trap. If you're not handing over the Mugu Guy Pan to apartment 3C, you ain't getting paid. If you're a rideshare driver, you're literally programming the software that will replace you the moment autonomous cars are legalized. With leverage sales, you offer people the chance to unleash the power of leverage. There are two other models worth exploring a little deeper. Recently, there's been an explosion of financially related side gig models. Trading NFTs, Forex, and crypto MLMs. The issues with these models are substantial. They include huge legal and financial risks, terrible duplication, and poor residual income. 
Because these are such highly regulated areas, most of the models are often of questionable legality and frequently are outright fraud. This takes us to the mother of all side gigs, becoming a digital content creator or online influencer. Often when I'm speaking to high school kids or young adults, this is their most desired occupation. After all, what could be cooler than working from home, making zany videos, snagging sponsorship deals, and writing the computer algorithms to riches? Um, not so quick. For maybe one in 10 million people, <laughs> becoming an influencer provides life-changing money and a gratifying lifestyle. For the 9,999,999 others, they've unknowingly signed up for an earning model of high risks, terrible residual income, and zero security. Most online influencers are grinders, chasing both followers and sponsors and continuously changing algorithms. If most influencers understood the lifestyle, income potential, security, and residual income potential of leveraged sales, they would shut down their accounts tomorrow. <laughs> when someone evaluates the whole spectrum of side gig opportunities, it's going to come down to an important question to ask. How do you want to live? Most people don't realize what a lonely and isolating job those other options can be. Working alone, competing with everyone else who does what you do, hunting for secrets, paying for your education. When you recruit someone in your business, you're offering them the chance to become part of a greater team with support and motivation from dreamers. You their entire sponsorship line, and the company all have a vested interest in their success and will train and mentor them for free. So know what you've got. Millennials and succeeding generations love side gig opportunities. Show them why you've got a better way. Your real job. When you first begin in leverage sales, you might think that your job is to sponsor everyone you know. That's not possible because each person makes their own decision whether to enroll or not. Instead, your job really is just this, to prospect everyone you know, meaning simply ask them to take a look. You've been blessed with a great gift an empowering way to earn a living and become successful by helping others reach success. That comes with a corresponding opportunity to share this gift with others. What they do with it, it's up to them. What duplicates is greater than what works. A lot of stuff works. What really matters is what duplicates. If you run a commercial during the Super Bowl or World Cup, you could sign up tens of thousands of people. This strategy would work if you're just interested in collecting bodies. But how many of those new people would have the expertise and millions of dollars this requires to duplicate you? Many people think duplication is about them and their techniques and tactics. They think they can muscle their way to duplication, but that never happens. Duplication cannot be pushed. It must be pulled. You must recruit and train people in a manner that illustrates how they can replicate the process so their people can replicate the process level after level after level. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of how duplicable your system is. Beware of the alligators. Fun fact, 
alligators, who have one of the largest mouths you'll ever see, have a brain about the size of a lima bean. Unfortunately, there are people with the same ratio (laughs) of mouth to brain dimensions. And they can't wait to tell you why leverage sales is a scam, won't work, and why you're a loser for even trying. Frequently, they mean well. They're trying to protect you from something they're afraid could harm you. Frequently, they don't mean well. They're attacking you from petty jealousy because if you become successful, it takes away their excuse for their life of quiet desperation. It doesn't matter if their ignorance comes from a place of good intentions or not. If you buy into it, you'll sabotage your progress toward success. You should know up front that you will encounter a few alligators, but they can be minimized by using tools to screen out people who aren't good prospects. You're also going to have prospects who don't show up for appointments and people who enroll only to drop out immediately afterward. People drop out of schools, marriages, even life. This is all part of the spectrum of natural human behavior. The key is maintaining your equilibrium and staying focused on your dream. When someone doesn't show up for an appointment, a team member quits, or you come across an alligator, (laughs) smile inwardly and remind yourself that events like these are all part of the journey. And the journey is worth it. Never let someone who lost their dream steal yours. Stop chasing antelopes. Never chase buses or candidates, because there will always be another one along in a few minutes. If someone isn't interested, they won't become more so because you're hounding them. One of the simplest philosophies is also one of the best. Look for people who are looking. If they're looking for a better life, you're looking for them. If they're not looking for a better life, you don't need to be looking for them, at least not right now. Remember, this isn't about closing and convincing, but educating and opening. You never want to be presenting to anyone who doesn't want to be in a presentation in that moment. The secret is creating that anticipation. Don't chase people who are trying to run away. Let them paint their ass white and run with the other antelopes. Book two. Draft your superstars. Follow the formula. Success in our business is created by producing strong duplication. There is a three-part formula for creating duplication. And the closer you adhere to this formula, the stronger your duplication will be. Here it is. Empower a large group of people to repeat a few simple actions over a sustained period of time. Let's analyze the three parts. Part one requires having a large enough group of people. If it's only you trying to empower one or two people, there's not enough traction to kickstart duplication. You need to keep recruiting until you have sufficient critical mass to start the process. Part two involves getting the team to repeat a few simple actions. Spoiler alert, (laughs) learning neuro-linguistic programming techniques is not a simple action. Becoming a social media influencer with 100,000 followers is not a simple action. Buying a $500 online study course to learn sales skills, how to overcome objections and closing techniques is not a simple action. When I say a few simple actions, I mean teaching people to do things like asking prospects to sample a product, review a booklet, or watch a presentation. The strongest growth is created when you drill down to the most basic elements because every increase in complexity creates a corresponding decrease in duplication. Finally, you've got to practice parts one and two for a long enough period to build out the culture of the organization. 
If you start out like a house on fire for two months, then disappear for a few more, you'll come back to a dead or dying team. Stay consistent following this formula religiously for your first year. After that, your team will duplicate like it's on autopilot. Learn the parachute skill sets. There are five parachute skill sets you need to become proficient in as quickly as possible. They are meeting people, working a candidate list, inviting, presentations, and follow-up. I call these the parachute skills because once you become proficient in them, you have earning skills that will allow you to provide for your family. Anywhere, anytime, you could parachute into any free country, even one where you don't speak the language, and be able to earn a living. Ideally, everyone on the team will become proficient in these skills within their first few weeks using the study, do, and teach simultaneously philosophy. The most important thing to recognize early in your career is that all of these are skill sets and skill sets can be learned and improved. When someone says, I don't know that many people, what they're really saying is, I'm not willing to learn the skill set of meeting people. Get the convo started. You already know that meeting people is a parachute skill set that can be learned. If you're naturally shy or introverted, this can seem to be a task too daunting. But you can easily short-circuit that fear by putting yourself in situations where others initiate conversations with you. And that happens when you're in environments of shared experiences. If you're walking down the street wearing a House of the Dragon hoodie and somebody is walking toward you in a Game of Thrones t-shirt, they probably can't wait to chat you up. When you're out walking Bella at 6 a.m. and somebody else is out with their pooch, you'll probably strike up a conversation effortlessly. And you can bet the keys to everything you own that if you're pregnant or pushing a baby stroller and encounter someone in the same situation, within three seconds, (laughs) you will be chatting together like you've known each other for 20 years. Your shared experiences create an immediate bond. So when you'd like to add some names to your candidate list, the best place to start is wondering where you might put yourself in a shared situation experience. This can be anything from going to a comedy club or the midnight showing of a superhero movie premiere to joining a sports league, taking an online class, or clicking on a hashtag. Rinse and repeat online and offline. Fish where the fish are. The anglers who catch the most fish don't accomplish that because they have some secret system to attract or catch fish. Although most of them are liars (laughs) and will say that they do. The fishermen and fisherwomen who catch the most fish do so because they fish where the most fish are. In our business, this means you are always meeting new people and migrating them to your candidate list. And where do you find the most people today? Online. And you need to be online to meet them there. Now, Very important. Listen carefully. This doesn't mean you have to become an influencer with thousands of followers, take courses on how to attract followers, or become a content creation factory. We can argue that those things are tough to duplicate anyway. But you still must at least have a presence online. You can meet people and prospect online organically. Just be sincere, be authentic, and be there. Every generation from the millennials on are digital natives. 
They grew up on technology, live on their phones, and want businesses that they can do online. When they're thinking about joining your team, one of the first things they do is search for you online. If your last post was on MySpace during the Bush administration, (laughs) they may not feel that confident about your ability to lead a team today. Of course, you can and will still meet plenty of people offline. But why limit your fishing to a local fishing hole and ignore the ocean? Fish where the tasty fish are. Not only do savvy fishermen fish where the fish are, but they go where the meaty, bigger fish are swimming, not the areas where the minnows congregate. In network marketing, that means going after the best candidates first. Let me tell you something that may shock you a little. You should approach the most busy most ambitious, most successful people on your list first. People who are successful in other jobs and businesses are likely to be successful in your business. Don't make the mistake of not approaching those on what I'll call your chicken list. The people you might be afraid to call because they have prestigious titles, a high level of education, or obvious wealth. In fact, the candidate who works two jobs, drives rideshare part-time, is a bishop in his or her church, coaches Little League, and volunteers at the soup kitchen, will almost always find time to view your presentation. Meanwhile, you might find that your unemployed cousin living with his mom is too busy watching reruns of Storage Wars to listen to what you have to offer. People with good teaching or training skills, think professors, speakers, coaches, yoga teachers, martial arts instructors, ministers, rabbis, imams, etc., are naturals for the business. You will find great candidates anywhere people of consciousness gather. Anyone who is working on themselves, doing things such as continuing their education, taking courses or attending seminars, learning another language, practicing self-development through books, blogs, or podcasts, is a terrific candidate. All of these things apply online or off. You might meet them in a bookstore. Yes, they still exist, and I was in one the other day. Or on a website like goodreads.com. You can meet great candidates at the deluxe car wash or art gallery, or in an online group or social media account about exotic cars or art. Many spiritual communities like the Unity and Science of Mind churches offer a wide variety of classes taught by instructors almost nightly. Gym classes like Zumba, Step, and Pilates as well. The people attending these courses are great candidates, and the ones who teach them might be even better. Pretty much every version of these live courses or classes has an online equivalent. Anyone who's doing anything to improve themselves, whether they are studying a foreign language, learning to draw, or taking up basket weaving, have a great potential to be a successful member of your team. We've already talked about millennials and the following generations. Because of their affinity for the side gig lifestyle, these upcoming generations are excellent candidates for you. By the way, don't take this to mean you shouldn't be approaching baby boomers. There are outliers in every group. Boomers are used to hard work, stay committed, and don't want to outlive their money. We all know people who need the business desperately. But you should begin with the successful people on your list first. You'll develop skills, gain great experience, and start getting some financial results sooner. Then, by all means, go back to rescue those you want to help. But remember this. The best way to help the poor, sick, and exploited is to not be one of them. 
Don't be that guy or that gal. The reason you learn the parachute skill sets is so you can recruit people in a process they'll be able to duplicate. Don't make the mistake of some new distributors who over-index on hype and start accosting every person they meet with a sales pitch. Your commission breath is going to repel them. There's also a time and a place for approaching people. Don't try to make a presentation to the guy in line behind you at the dry cleaner. Get his info and find a more suitable time and place. Don't invite people for dinner, and just when they're expecting the cherry pie, you pull out your tablet and launch your PowerPoint presentation. Simply put, it's a lot better to be present and curious about them, ask questions, and monopolize the listening during dinner. If you do, you may find out their pains or dreams. You can always connect later with them and let them know that they've been on your mind and you've found something that can help them with those pain or dreams. Likewise, when you're interacting online, you wouldn't walk down Main Street in your town shouting at strangers to come to your presentation. So why would you do that on social media, through an email thread, or in a WhatsApp group? There's a natural process that drives successful recruiting, whether it's online or offline. Now, for you guys who are like note takers or you're kind of doing key parts, this one you got to really emphasize. Here's what that natural process is. One, two, three, four, five. Five steps. Meet people. Add to your candidate list. Develop the relationship. Approach when the timing is right and follow up. Take more shots on goal. Some people appear to be naturals for the business, and almost everyone responds positively to their invitations. Other people appear to be terrible at the business, and everyone they approach runs away, shrieking in fear. (laughs) But for 99% of the people in our business, their levels of success will be determined by two factors. Number one, their willingness to practice and prove on their parachute skill sets. And number two, the number of people they approach. The more shots on goal you take, the better your odds of running up the score. Set aside a block of time every week and use it to invite candidates from your list to look at some kind of presentation, a physical tool, a live stream, or an in-person presentation. Recruit for the 90%, not the 10%. Looking at the biz on the surface, it certainly appears to be a sales business. But that superficial view prevents you from seeing the whole picture. This is not just a sales business, it's a leveraged sales business. People who are great at sales receive only the minimal rewards of the business because their methods are hard to duplicate. The greatest results come when you're able to integrate teaching, duplication, and leverage. Only about 10% of people have selling skills, leaving 90% who don't know how to sell, are deathly afraid of rejection, and wouldn't make a cold call if you held a gun to their head. Think about the formula for duplication we discussed earlier. It begins with... Empower a large group of people, dot, dot, dot. Well, if you need a large group of people for success, which is the better crowd to draw from? The 10% or the 90%? Viewed this way, your whole perspective expands. You begin to understand that while we get paid only for products or services that are sold to the end consumer... What causes those sales to multiply is duplication. So when you take the business as a whole, it's much more a teaching and training model, not a selling one.
Selling superstars from real estate or insurance can still be successful in our business, but this often requires a lot of training to show them how to avoid having their sales skills work against them. You certainly should give them the opportunity, but don't overlook the school teachers, yoga instructors, sports coaches, and others with strong teaching skills because they are wonderful candidates for success. Likewise for engineers. Engineers think in terms of systems and analytics, so give them a duplicable system to follow and they can crush in the biz. Big list equals strong posture. In this context, posture doesn't mean standing up straight, but the way you present yourself to candidates. Most importantly, the strength of your invitations. The foundation of our business is inviting. It requires inviting people constantly to watch videos, listen to audios, read a booklet or brochure, or attend a presentation. A large candidate list produces a strong posture, which creates effective invitations. A small candidate list produces a weak posture, which creates ineffective invitations. If you stop making your list after the first five or six people you think are naturals for the business, you'll probably approach those people with a timid, fearful mindset. Because if even a few don't get involved, you've already blown half your list. With a large list, you will approach people with more strength and confidence. If there are 200 people on your list, you won't get despondent and worried if the first four aren't interested. You're still looking at 196 more, so it's a whole lot easier to stay positive and productive. A large list is the difference between begging people for favors instead of offering an opportunity with conviction. Candidates gravitate toward people with confidence. The law of the drunken orangutan. <laughs> this is one of my mantras is to tell people, if you're in front of a candidate and your lips are moving, you need to be pointing to an external source tool. You can spend years learning so much about your product or service line that you're able to make a compelling two-hour presentation to any candidate at any time. You see this frequently in nutrition and wellness companies. Lay people with no certification start diagnosing conditions and prescribing cures as though they were medical professionals. This is illegal unethical and dangerous. If you take this route, you'll enroll lots of people, but most of them will quickly drop out, and the ones who remain will have low levels of duplication. The same thing happens after you perfect your three-hour breakdown analysis of why your compensation plan is superior to any other plan ever developed. People will be impressed. Many will sign up, but few will duplicate. These things look like an advantage on the surface, but are duplication killers. Instead of learning a complex presentation, use an external source tool. A mobile app, flip chart, booklet, video, catalog, or some other resource. If they're using the right external source tool, anyone, including a drunk orangutan, should be able to reach the first rank in your comp plan simply by pointing and grunting. The I can do this dynamic. When you're making those amazing two or three hour presentations showcasing your expertise we just discussed, most candidates subconsciously will be thinking, wow, he or she knows a lot about this. I bet they're going to be great in this business, but it would never work for me. 
When you convey the benefits of your business using an external source tool, most candidates you make presentations to will subconsciously be thinking, I could do this too. Spoiler alert. People who are thinking, I could do this too, are usually the ones who sign up. The big thing is the small thing. Put yourself in this picture. You look at your phone and you see it's a call from one of your new distributors. You answer to find them in breathless excitement over a special shortcut they found to grow the business faster. You think you know where this is headed, but you let them share their breakthrough. They explain that they just met the guy who styles the hair of the lady who walks the dog for the guy who washes Oprah's Bentley. And if you help them work the chain, they can enroll Oprah and she will sponsor 20,000 people a month. This is a big thing. Unfortunately, the big thing is the small thing because the likelihood of this happening is almost zero. Likewise, when you get a call from an excited distributor who just found out his brother-in-law works for the military in their procurement division, he thinks he's going to land a contract where they will buy your protein shakes for every soldier in the army. They have no idea of the multi-year bidding process and bureaucracy such a deal takes. And even given the minuscule possibility that this deal gets done, it would produce sales, but no duplication. Here's the good news. The small thing is the big thing. During the four years it might take to close that army contract, your distributor could instead focus on recruiting 12 or 18 school teachers, rideshare drivers, little league coaches, plumbers, and stay-at-home moms or dads who follow the system and develop a team into 12,000 active distributors who create a multi-million dollar volume that produces residual income for decades. The big thing is the small thing, and the small thing is the big thing. Open people, don't close them. Isaac Newton gave us three laws of motion. Number one, an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion remains in motion at constant speed and in a straight line unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Number two, the acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied. Number three, Whenever one object exerts a force on another object, that second object exerts an equal and opposite on the first. Now, allow me to add a fourth law. <laughs> Number four, the harder you close someone, the less they will duplicate. People you must manipulate or arm twist to join will buy a starter kit, but will also be the first ones to drop out. Stop closing people and start opening them. Meaning, simply present your case in the most honest but compelling way. Educate your candidate on all the benefits they will receive from your product line and business opportunity. Then let them make what they feel is the best decision for them. If that means being a customer, great. If that means joining the business, great. If that means not joining in any capacity, great. Honor the no. By doing that, if later their situation changes and the timing is better, you have a much better shot at getting a new customer or distributor. You'll enroll fewer people, but you'll have a much more active team and much more fulfilling. Book 3. 
leading an all-volunteer army. Hard truth. There's only one cause for a bad team, and that's a bad leader. Own it. Study. Do. Teach. Most people who join our leverage sales profession begin their career by doing something that looks like the ideal way to reach success, but is actually a terrible mistake causing slower growth for them and their team. What is this harmful mistake? They think they first should study the business so that later they can do the business and even later sometimes much, much later, teach the business. They want to study everything for two months first. Then they want to believe they will act. And then once they are rich and famous, they'll go back and train everyone on how to achieve their level of success. Of course, this scenario only works in fantasy. Because if you model this timeline, then the people you bring in duplicate that process and growth takes too long. The time required for people to earn anything of substance is so drawn out that your dropout rate spikes dramatically. Motivation and positive thinking will carry a new distributor only so far. Unless a person has a believable, logical plan for attaining her dreams, fear and procrastination will take over. If someone studies the business for weeks and only then starts doing it, they're usually not still around later to teach it. This dramatically alters the DNA of your team because everyone takes their lead from the behavior you modeled for them initially. To create rapid, strong, and sustained success, you need to study do and teach simultaneously. Sounds crazy, but it's easier to build the business fast than it is to build slowly. Starting fast creates excitement and momentum that spreads down your group. And by generating cash flow quickly, you set the tone for your team and create an exciting demonstration of success for candidates. If you spend your first few weeks getting ready to get ready, you'll probably find yourself on a procrastination train. Your excitement fades and your dream gets further away. I believe you make or break a new distributor in the first two weeks and the first 48 hours are critical. The goal is that somebody can join on a Tuesday, go through their new distributor orientation that night, and be enrolling customers and distributors within their first two days. Then help their new distributors replicate the process. This keeps getting duplicated on every level and creates an ever-expanding ripple effect throughout the team. The result is strong DNA throughout the team, creating a vicious cycle of growth and duplication. Help real people in the real world. There are so many people in our profession who are earning five and six figure monthly checks that we sometimes get jaded. I once had a guy jump from my team to another company because he felt he was a failure because he was only earning $50,000 a month. In most of the world, you can transform somebody's life with a supplemental residual income of a few hundred dollars or euros a month. It's okay to dream big and shoot for those big checks, bonus cars, and exotic trips. Just know that the best way to attain them is a grounded approach to help as many people as possible get out of debt and start building a healthy financial future for their families. How does it play 25 levels down? Before you make any big change in an approach, ask yourself the following question. How well could this action... I'm about to take be duplicated by somebody 
25 levels below me who has never met me in person. They probably know your name. Maybe they've seen you on a stage on a, at the convention or on a live stream. But if they haven't even met you, will they be able to get the same results as you? Don't confuse reactive with active. Let's suppose you're working with a wellness company. One afternoon, you're on break with a coworker from your day job, and he complains about feeling tired in the afternoon. You leap into action, providing information about your company's amazing energy drink. Your coworker places an order, so you pat yourself on the back for doing such a great job actively building your business. Not so fast. Now suppose you're out for dinner with friends, and one of them mentions she doesn't like her job because the pay is low and offers little potential for advancement. Again, you leap into action and invite her to see an opportunity presentation. Like the previous example, you did something that can grow your business. That's great, but these gains happened only because the candidates were practically begging you for information. That's being reactive. Don't confuse that with being active. You want to be active and intentional about growing your business. This means that every week you should have a block of time in your schedule exclusively dedicated to contacting candidates, inviting them to look at what you have to offer. Cutting edge equals off the ledge. For many of you listening to this, at some point in your lifetime, you're going to be able to purchase a robot or software that will be able to make a hundred billion calculations per second, scour social media, broadcast networks and employment databases, identifying ideal candidates for your business, give you an accurate probability percentage as to who will respond positively to a presentation, eliminating any chance of rejection. And finally, scan your candidates while you're making presentations, monitoring their breathing and pulse rates, eye movements and body language, sending you signals when your points are resonating with them. If you can be the first person on earth to purchase that software, let me tell you what will happen. First, you will become the number one recruiter in your company. Most likely, you will recruit more people than anyone else in human history. Number three, you'll make a ton of cash have the worst duplication of any leader, and become very frustrated and unfulfilled. You will likely drop out within a year, knowing that there are better and more effective ways to utilize your robot. As your last act before you quit, You'll buy 400,000 copies of this book <laughs> and gift them to all those team members you left behind to assuage your guilt for unknowingly exploiting them. Okay, I'm having a little fun here, but here's where it takes us to. There are lots of well-meaning, and unfortunately, a few not very well-meaning, people who will be trying to sell you courses, coaching programs, and ebooks on how to recruit using the latest and greatest AI and other cutting edge technology. But remember the formula for duplication we discussed earlier. You want to lead your team to do a few simple actions. So in the case of leverage sales, Anything bleeding edge or even leading edge is going to murder your duplication results. It's easier to give birth than resurrect the dead. No matter how hard you try or how bad you want it for someone else, you can't drag them across the finish line. 
It's like trying to push a rope. And the worst part is, often they will be trying to pull you back to the other side, to pull you back into being a victim. It is not your job to build the businesses for other people. This is their responsibility. If it's to be, it's up to them. Lead by example, offer support, and be there for them, but they must walk the path. Stop chasing alligators, antelopes, and people who desperately want to remain a victim. When you find yourself in one of these scenarios, you're trying to drag somebody across the success line, the winning line. They seem to be trying to drag you back the other side. Put a wreath on the coffin and move on down the road. Go find somebody who really wants to live their dream. It's chill on your personal brand, bro. <laughs> Don't try to make yourself the superhero. Superhero leaders who want to build up their personal brand all the time suck all the oxygen from the room. This starts a progression of decreasing duplication and increased grinding. You may think you look good in a cape and tights, but you're going to end up on a reality TV show somewhere wondering why you're surrounded by so many codependent people. Make the team, the system, and the lifestyle we offer the superhero. This isn't about building people's belief in you, but building belief in themselves. Anytime you have a choice of being famous or being rich, choose rich. Action is the answer. Most people don't need bigger goals or a larger vision. They simply need to take more action. The answer to all the biggest challenges in your business is action. If you don't know enough people, the answer is action. If your volume's too low, the answer is action. If you're not qualifying at rank, the answer is action. If your group seems lethargic and lazy, the answer is action. If two of your leaders are at war, the answer is action. If the economy is creating stress on your product sales, the answer is, yeah, you guessed it, action. If a bunch of products are on back order, the answer is action. If another company is poaching your people, the answer is action. And if your sponsor is a jerk, the answer is action. Lift people's eyes above the horizon. A couple of decades ago, I was asked to give my definition of leadership for a book on that subject. I defined it then as the ability to cause people to willingly take actions they wouldn't normally want to do. For example, in a war, somebody charges a machine gun nest to protect their unit. In our business, it might be as simple as somebody buying their first suit or giving their first presentation in front of a group. My thinking has evolved since then, and here's how I would define leadership today. Inspiring people to become the highest possible version of themselves and building the environment that facilitates this process. Managers work from power and authority. They can force people to do things because of the control they hold over issuing paychecks. Leaders, especially leaders in our profession, must work from inspiration, causing people to willingly choose to take action. The best leadership skills I developed for leverage sales came from outside the business. What helped me most was the work I did serving on boards for my church, the Chamber of Commerce, a film festival, and other organizations like that. Because in each case, I was working with an all-volunteer army. When you can't hire and fire people, you're forced to learn how to inspire, 
lead, and partner with them for achieving a common goal. That's what will make you great in this cause and effect. To create a better life, you must create a better you. The difference between your group today and your group 10 years from now will be the books you read, the podcasts you listen to, and the people you associate with. Your business will grow only as fast as you do. Let's talk about making moves. Place your individual attention on people who show you they are motivated and working and use group training to work with the rest. A productive relationship between a sponsor and a team member is like a chess match. You make a move, they make a move. You make the next move, and so on. Don't ever make two moves in a row. Don't be a helicopter sponsor. Have you seen those helicopter parents who hover over their children constantly, desperately seeking to protect them from ever scraping their knee? Have you ever seen how those kids end up? Never do anything for a distributor that they can do themselves or you're hurting their development. Shut down the all-you-can-eat buffet. Don't give away personal enrollees. Do the work your team members are supposed to be doing or place orders to qualify them at rank. If you do those things, you're creating a dysfunctional culture that not only won't duplicate, but it will create entitlement mentality. Teach people how to fish. If they demand the all-you-can-eat fish fry, (laughs) direct them to another restaurant. Tell your story in a way that empowers. If you get invited to speak at a convention or other major event, you might think that it's a reward for your hard work. It's not. The pin and bonus check are for that. You're being asked to share your story in a way that empowers the whole team. Nobody wants to hear an entire speech about all the bonus cars, award trips, and huge checks that you've earned. When you're given the privilege of the platform, use it to show the audience you have been where they are and you can guide them to get to where they want to be. Yo, bro, lose the Lambo. (laughs) You know, back in the day, our recruiting pitch was pretty simple. Lots of pics of voluptuous young women in bikinis, stacks of cash on islands, and exotic supercars. I wouldn't know anything about this, of course. (laughs) There are two reasons you shouldn't recruit that way any longer. Number one, it's tacky. Number two, it doesn't work anymore. Sensibilities have changed. Back when Michael Douglas won an Oscar for portraying the fictional character Gordon Gecko with his greed is good monologue in the movie Wall Street... This type of rah-rah approach was not just tolerated, but frequently emulated. Although such tactics can work with a small subsection of the population today, they're not the people you really want on your team. Focus your recruiting message on social entrepreneurship, getting people out of debt, and becoming successful by helping other people reach success. It works, and it's the right thing to do. Oh, and by the way, if you still want to get a Lambo, this will get it for you a whole lot. Challenge. Don't pander. People like to be told what they want to hear. Unfortunately, that doesn't serve them. If you really want to help the people on your team, love them enough to challenge them to become the highest possible version of themselves. 
Search for greatness. The greatest gift you can give the people on your team is to see the greatness in them before they see it in themselves. Then tell them. They might just borrow your belief in them until they develop it for themselves. Expect greatness. Treat every new distributor as if they have the potential to reach the highest rank in the company and less on until they prove it otherwise. Build a dream greater than the team. No matter how large the bonus checks get, how expensive the bonus cars become, or what carrot diamonds are in the bling bling, at some point the sugar rush is just empty calories. The material rewards of our business are delicious, but the best reward is who you become. The greatest leaders in our space elevate people's eyes above the horizon. Inspire people to become part of something greater than themselves. Be the kind of sponsor you would want. When someone enrolls with you, they're giving you a sacred honor. Do everything you can to deserve that trust. Never knowingly lie to them. Don't advise them of anything not in the best interest of their business, not yours. Direct them through a new distributor orientation. Have them enroll for the free Duplication Nation alerts at duplicationnation.com. Make sure they read or listen to this book and let them borrow your belief until they develop their own. You have a responsibility to be successful. You can't help anyone break rank, earn big bonus checks, or reach the top of your compensation plan until you've done it yourself. Only then can you become an empowering sponsor, coach, and mentor. You are responsible to model the appropriate behavior and showcase what a well-managed distributorship looks like. Have a viable customer ratio, keep enrolling, demonstrate exemplary event participation, and work down in depth. You owe it to your team to get out of debt, run a profitable business, and live a dream lifestyle. Be the change you seek. When it's not working... When your enrollments and volume seem to plateau, or you seem to be encountering excessive friction, here's a short checklist of questions to consider. Am I doing the actions I want my distributors to do? How can I be a little better tomorrow? Where can I look it up? Am I following the system, or did I go rogue? What book should I read to break out now? Who can I ask in the sponsorship line? How would Randy handle this situation? Who are the three best candidates I can contact right now? Be the number one investor in your dream. If you don't invest in yourself, you're probably a bad investment for anyone else. What are you doing to invest in your health, develop new skill sets, learn more about the business, and become a stronger leader? And then here's the million-dollar question. What do you spend more on each week, your self-development or Starbucks? Ride the tide. It's been said a lot that a rising tide raises all boats. That's true, but the concept only works if your boat is in the water. If you allow challenges or rejection to make you quit, your boat goes into dry dock. Never give up on your dreams. Decide. Success is a decision. 
When you make a decision, you can turn around and create a new direction in any area of your life. No matter where you are right now, it doesn't have to be the same after today. You can do the most extraordinary things. You can transform your life at any moment, but only when you decide to. Final thoughts. You are worth it. Leverage sales is simple, but it's not easy. In fact, the business can be tough sometimes. Let's go back to where we started. You're going to face alligators, dropouts, and no-shows, and rejection, apathy, and even ridicule. But don't ever give up because the challenges are worth it. The work is worth it. You're worth it. People without a dream are threatened by those who still have one. For every person seeking greatness, there are hundreds more whose job is safeguarding mediocrity. Please, stop trying to fit in. Be bold. Be a dreamer. Be a dreamer so bold that if you ever get charged for the crime of dreaming, there's enough evidence for the jury to convict you. Peace. Hey, in the print edition of the book, we have this thing that's called Contract with Myself. And normally you don't include this kind of thing in an audio book, but I want to make sure, I'm going to read it to you, because if you want to do it, you can write it out and, and do it like everyone else, because it's all about, you know, your self-discipline, making a commitment to yourself. So here's the contract. Let me read it to you. And if you're really serious about doing this, uh, write it out yourself and sign it. And you can give a copy to your sponsor if you want. Here we go. I commit to making this year the year that will transform my life. This is my contract to my higher self, the person I am meant to become. Here are my commitments. Number one, I will work my business with passion, intensity, and urgency. Allowing for two weeks of vacation, I will work at least 10 hours a week during the other 50 weeks in committed, productive activities to grow my business. Number two, I will model a prosperous lifestyle. I will strive to live my life and build my business in a way that will inspire my team. Number three, I will become financially free. Each month, I will move toward erasing debt and becoming debt-free. Number four, I will lead my team to victory. A victory is not my rank or goal. Victory is helping the prosperity warriors on my team reach their true potential. My victory comes from helping them achieve theirs. I will not simply watch the movement. I will be the movement. And finally, number five, I will not give up. I will face my fears and summon courage. When others doubt me, I will remember why I began this journey. If and when people reject me, ridicule me, or attack me, I will use that as fuel to build strength. I will stand strong for my dreams. On this, I will never compromise. I deserve success and prosperity and will not give up until I achieve it. This is my contract with myself. So date it, sign it, and like I say, maybe give it to your sponsor or an accountability partner, somebody who will remind you of this if you face some dark moments. All right, for the acknowledgments, I want to express some mad love to... Jaime Lokier, my co-warrior at DuplicationNation.com, where we're working to take the profession back from the con artists and scammers who are trying to hijack the business. Stephen Pressfield for being my friend, for being brilliant, 
and for writing The War of Art, which served as the inspiration for this book. My work wife, the lovely and talented Anne Feinstein, who is always there when I need her. And also the leaders and executives of companies who were gracious enough to provide a review and testimonial for the book, which was used in all the marketing. So thanks to every one of them. And then I want to do a little extra mad love for those who critiqued the very first outline, providing sage advice and suggestions that made this book more helpful for you and your team. So I want to mention Orion and Hilda Sale, Jordan Adler, Jeremiah Bradley, Peter Andreas Sorensen, Dana Collins, Michael Smith, Andy Dooley, John Soliter, Jose Lopez, and the Duke of Chigwell, His Royal Highness, Wesley Hawthorne Harrison Linden III, <laughs> and a supersized dollop of, in, of appreciation for Eric Flacco Gamio, who was the toughest on me and thus the most helpful. And then I'd also like to send some mad love to Vicki McCown, likely to go down in history as the greatest book editor since the Earth's crust cooled. Joey Jojo Leslie, the guy who keeps me out of the ditches, and who, along with Devin Horning and Crystal Andrus and the rest of the crack commando team at Prime Concepts Group, brought this book to the world. Uh, of course, all the people at Ascent Audio who do this audio version to you. And finally, my mom, who raised three kids by herself knocking on doors, selling Avon products. The best role model for success a future entrepreneur could ever have. You've been listening to the ABCs of MLM by Randy Gage, narrated by yours truly, Randy Gage. Copyright 2024. Prosperity Factory Incorporated, recorded by arrangement with Randy Gage. Recording copyright 2024 by Ascent Audio, a division of recorded books. If you've enjoyed this audiobook, please visit rbmediaglobal.com forward slash Ascent dash audio where you'll find a wide selection of their unabridged titles. Thank you for being an Ascent Audio listener.